the, the, the aggressive. So, so here, Luigi, let's turn now to, you know, l most patients when we, their first diagnosis with follicular we're not necessarily treating them, right? They're, they get watched and waited until, um, until a certain time. What drives you to want to start therapy on someone with follicular And then maybe t just a couple words on how you, you know, perhaps pick an initial uh, treatment for it. So this is a very important issue. So we are using uh, uh, the GELF criteria according to the French uh, uh, group uh, published several years ago. And I think it's very important to evaluate this uh, uh, issue because at the end of the day, at least 30, 40 percent of the patient are diagnosed with follicular lymphoma. Uh, I, I think it's sufficient to, to, to watch and wait this patient because it's an indolent disease with a very low tumor burden, uh, in good performance status, uh, and uh, we have time to treat this patient. So it was, as, as uh, uh, my colleague said before, it's an indolent disease, uh, and uh, in several cases, uh, we, we don't use treatment for uh, five, seven, eight, ten years. There are, I have some patients with diagnosis of follicular lymphoma done 10 years ago that uh, in the, all these periods they're only watching weight without any kind of treatment. Could be important uh, in terms of uh, uh, treatment when we have uh, early stage, you can use Rituxim as a single agent, for example. There was a, a very important trial published several years ago by, the, by UK colleagues concerning the comparison between uh, uh, watching weight versus rituxima versus rituxima induction plus maintains treatment with rituxima. And at the end of the day, uh, probably in this setting of patient, rituxima plus maintains treatment with rituxima for at least two years could be the best uh, choice in this trial. In uh, our hands, in the clinical, uh, uh, in the, the real life every day, we are using sometimes four weeks administration of rituxima and then we we'll stop and we'll see. Uh, if there is uh, some uh, uh, reduction of the lymph nodes of the tumor board, and then we can decide to, to retreat the patient with the conventional chemotherapy in the second time. Anyway, as I said before, it's very important to evaluate the patient with according to the GAF criteria because uh, at least one third of the patient don't need uh, any kind of treatment at the beginning uh, of this uh, uh, long story with the insulin lymphoma. And the GAF criteria are these, you know, basically people have big bulky lymph nodes, pleural effusions, organ compromise, maybe cytopenias, those type of things. They're very symptomatic. Um, so that's, so, so we heard from, from colleagues here in, in Italy, in Nebraska, is that you, you're doing the similar things? So I think uh, when you meet GELF criteria, um, and you have to be careful because over time GELF criteria has changed uh, depending upon studies. I think the, the original BLNI and GELF came out uh, around the same period of time and in some instances in some reviews and some clinical trials uh, there may be additions uh, beyond GELF criteria. Um, I think when you find a patient that has follicular lymphoma that has GELF criteria that uh, opens the door for a discussion about therapy. It's not necessarily a mandate uh, for therapy, but at least a discussion and trying to plan the, plant the seed that your, your lymphoma is likely going to need uh, treatment in the near future. And so whether or not it's going to be rituximab monotherapy, rituximab plus chemotherapy, or a clinical trial, I think that that's the, that's the door to start the, to start the conversation. Yeah, I, I would just say, you know, I think most commonly in the United States and in my practice, bendamustine rituximab would be my go-to regimen. Uh, you know, I would say that caveat of the more aggressive patient, I might be thinking of our CHOP. And in that older patient, I'm going to be thinking about single agent rituximab, and that might be enough therapy in, in and of itself. I think those tenets that we've had for many, many years of how we approach patients with chemo or chemoimmunotherapy or just antibody alone in the frontline setting really hasn't changed significantly despite the uh, increased information and data that we continue to accumulate. I'm, uh, I'm impressed by the variability in people's, um, will, you know, how long people are watching and waiting. I remember when the resort trial was being designed, you know, one of the biggest issues about it, th that, it that no one could agree on when it was appropriate to start therapy uh, uh, versus, versus watch and wait. And this was presumably all among people that were uh, lymphoma experts. And so huge variability, I think, in practices about when to start treatment and when not.